Hi everyone. Had so much fun with the other two videos, I decided to do another one. This time I am going to show you my FFOs, the ones that are totally finished. I uh, walked around the house and plucked everything off the walls, dusted them off, make them look good. And then there's other things that are just here and there. So I figured I'd show you my cross stitch and I have a couple other things I'll show you that I finished off too since I do almost every craft. I don't, do, I don't knit, I crochet, but I don't knit. I just couldn't get a hang of it. It wasn't comfortable for me. Yeah, you can't do everything. You gotta leave something out for other people. I um, also have a tag that I got from Stitcherisa who got it from Whimsical Daisical and she had put it up on her stitch with me. It's her latest stitch with me. Today's the 24th, well, 23rd, 24th. It's in the middle of the night. And it's her latest one from, from February. Uh, she has the tag there. Um, you can download it off of her Dropbox. So I figured I might as well do that. It's a little get to know your needle worker tag. And, uh, then show my things. So the first question, where do you live? Right now, I live in the armpit of Florida. That's what I call it. It's Okeechobee. No, I'm not going to spell it for you. Okeechobee, Florida. If you look at the map of Florida, for those that never heard of it, it's, uh, there's a big hole towards the south part of the state. That's Lake Okeechobee. I'm at the top of the hole. I got jokes. Anyway, I live there with my boyfriend. He's a deputy at the county jail. And I am not originally from here, though. I am originally from Philly. I am born and raised Philly. Go Eagles. I cried. I danced. I danced so much I hurt myself and was exhausted at that Super Bowl. And I did go to a party that was hosted by Patriot fans. It was six of them and one of me. And... I repped Philly really good, really good. They were a little mad, but not too mad. They they respect it. Anyway, it was great, and I'm a big Eagles fan. I have a tattoo. I have more than one tattoo. Oh, I'll show you one. This one. This is for my mom. She's not dead. It's not a memorial. She's still alive, but she retired from the theater. She was a seamstress, and I had my tattoo artist take the masks from another tattoo that was more of a um, New Orleans theme. Had f flowers, had roses and beads and everything. I had them take the mask and make a spool and a needle and thread. And I got this one done. Anyway, that's for my mama. She's retired now. She lives up in Pennsylvania. So I was born and raised in Philly. I lived all over Philly, South Philly mostly. Center City, Northeast, Fairmount. We lived in Jersey for a little bit, for a couple of years when I was really young. Don't remember much of that. And as I said before, I went to Milton Hershey School, so I lived in Hershey on and off because you live there except for the holidays. So I was in Hershey for a while. After I left Philly in 2007, I moved out to Harrisburg. I was living with my best friend and her family for a while. And I moved from Harrisburg down here to Florida. Now, I hate winter, so Florida's good for that. But this town, I'm ready to go. Anyway, it says, what do you do for a living? Right now, I don't, I do crafts. I try to sell my stuff on Etsy and help with the bills. But I'm a stay-at-home girlfriend and take care of my dog, who you might hear walking around a little bit back there, but I think he finally settled down. And uh, I did work at the casino. I paid out jackpots handle a lot of money that wasn't mine. I used to work at Rite Aid when I was up in uh, Pennsylvania. I did IT work, uh, field system support. And I've worked in the medical field a lot. Do I have children? It's number three. Do I have any children? I have three children. Uh, my daughter is up in up northern New Jersey. My She's 25. My son, who's 22, he is here in Florida with me. Well, he's not in town anymore. He moved up a little bit more north. And my youngest son, he just turned 20 and he lives in Philadelphia with his dad. So 
Uh, do I have any pets? Huh, there's a little story behind this one, too. I have a big old dog. He's a pit bull. He's adorable. He's a big, big chooch. His name is Gunner. And I have two snakes. They're ball pythons. They're not the huge giant one. They're mm, maybe that big. And uh, not very exciting. They just do snake things. And then I did have a cat. I, she had to be an outdoor cat because we had two cats when I first moved down here. But after a year, my boyfriend ended up on a nebulizer machine because he was so allergic. So we found a home for the one. The other one I couldn't home because she's, excuse my language, she's a bitch. She chose me. I didn't choose her when I was up in Harrisburg. She showed up and decided she wanted to stay. We took her back. She came back again. Her name was Callie. So... I couldn't find her a home. I wasn't going to get her put down or, you know, go to a shelter to be put down. So we kept her and we left her outside and fed her and everything. Bring her in for the hurricanes and bad weather, but otherwise she was outdoors. And she passed away last week. Now I say there's a story behind that because I know there's a lot of animal lovers. And I'm not saying I'm not an animal lover, but I don't get overly, overly emotional. And it was time for her to go. She was older. She was getting sick and she was getting old. So, and she went pretty quick. So I'm glad for that. I'm sad she's gone. But anyway, I posted R.I.P. Callie and I put a picture of her up there. And knowing the way some people think, and I try to cater sometimes to the lowest common denominator. My cat was laying there and her paws were all up. She was half upside down. And... I put a little disclaimer in my picture that I said, edit, please know that this picture was not of her when she died, that she was still alive when this picture was taken. Apparently that made it really funny. I didn't mean it to be funny, but it did end up being funny and a lot of people wanted to know why I had to put a disclaimer that it wasn't a dead cat. What can I say? Anything could be funny, I guess. I'm not upset over it. Please don't be upset. It's a it's sad. She's okay. She's buried in the backyard. It's all good. Um, she doesn't have to go through another summer in Florida, which is pretty rough. Uh, number five. What are my other hobbies besides stitching? A little bit of everything. I do crochet. Um, matter of fact, I have a couple of my crochet things. Well, I have one right here right now. The other one, I don't know where it went. This, I knew how to do crochet... I learned way back in Mount Hershey, somebody showed me how to do a granny square, not properly, sort of rigged it, got it to look like a granny square. Later on in life, I decided I wanted to learn how to read the patterns. I went to the library, this is way back when, went to the library, got a book and a VHS tape, and I learned how to do most of the stitches. If not, the, I mean, the internet's out here now. I can look it up if I can't remember. So I wanted to do doilies, and I did. I, I made a set of doilies, with who I, which I gave to my grandmother. I don't know where they went when she passed. Couldn't tell you. But I also made this one, and this is actually my pattern. Hey, you see that? I sort of adapted it from another pattern. So I made doilies, and I'm over it, because uh, I don't want to make doilies anymore. I've made afghans. I've made... And hats and scarves and a sweater and a lot of afghans. Anyway, um, I made a baby set. I'm trying to think. Anyway, I also do polymer clay, which I have a couple of those. I make buttons. I actually have some buttons on my Etsy account, but I've also made these, which sit on my shelf collecting dust. This little girl. She's cute. And this guy, and I know it says fall, but he's too cute to put away. I stuffed um, some straw in there, and I gave him blush with an actual blush on a Q-tip. And put his little hat on. And that sign, I think that came from Michael's. I made these years ago. It's been over ten years. They sit up on the shelf. I also sew. I sew. Matter of fact, um... I have grind guards. I don't have them up on my Etsy right now, but I do have some to put up. Here's one already on a Q-snap. This one's got watermelons. I've got one here. This is my Otlite. 
with a magnifier. Whimsical. So I do sewing. I did pick up a lot of sewing for my mom because she was a seamstress for the theater in Philadelphia. I also do beading. And I thought I had some... Oh. I've made bracelets and stuff, and I didn't take any good pictures of my bracelets. Go figure. But I have a lot of scissor fobs and zipper pulls. And these ones aren't up on my Etsy. I have some up on my Etsy, and I, I always link my Etsy underneath my video. But here's, like, one that's not up there yet. It's a unicorn. And I use these clasps. They're swivels. And they swivel very well. They don't get all tangled. They're really strong. I've never had one break. The lobster claws, I don't know where I put it. I made one with a lobster claw, and it just seems like the lobster claws get stuck on the scissors. Like, you can sometimes put it on there, but you can't open it up enough to pull it off. And um, also, the spring ends up going on those after a while. So I found these ones actually work a lot better, and they're thinner. So I like those. That's what I make mine with. And so I do beading. I even, I bought this from Dames of the Needle. I think she still has them on her Etsy and I could put her Etsy link down below. This was great. I think it was only like $12 and it holds floss. And I have yet to use it for floss, but it's so cool. Look at that. But I did this for it. I had this charm, which I thought was really cool. And I color it in the spool, and I used some antique hand-dyed silk ribbon. I think I might have got that from Not Forgotten Farms. But it needed something on the paddle to hang off, and I actually put it up here in front of me on a windowsill and let it dangle down. I haven't used it yet for flaw. I guess I should, but it's there. And I have these ornamental pins that I make. See, there's a big pen. It's good for when you make um, the pin cushions and stuff, if you just want to put it in. Just to put it up on the shelf if you're not using it for actual sewing. And there's a whole bunch. I haven't put these up on my Etsy either. I need to get some of these up there. Some doves. Some oriental. Little cat. And... Some bling. I don't know if it's gonna focus. No. Anyway, I have all those and I have zipper poles and I really, I got seed beads. Well, they're not, uh, seed beads I can do, but the little crystals, I made some really cool bracelets and I'm kicking myself for not getting a good picture of those. Those were really cool. I might make those again. Um. I also, I have needle minders too. <laughs> I found these, I made these. These are up on my Etsy too. Because sometimes you just poop. And what else do I do? I do punch needle, which I have an FFO. This one I designed myself. This one's called, I call him Poor Harold. I have not sold the design, I just drew it out and I punched it out and I thought he was really cool and it all started because I bought this it's like I guess you can call it a frame but it's in the shape of a coffin I think I got it at Michael's like half off or something like that on two of the edges it looked like it was separating a little bit so I added these little rusty components you can look it up like rusty tin embellishments and I'm sure it's online. But this is poor Harold. I thought he was just too adorable. He stays up all year round too. Because it's always Halloween. Um, I did. I also do some painting. I sew. Um, I can't even think of anything else that I do. I don't know. This I did. This is a Mill Hill kit. And I painted the box. I did just some dots and little flowers because I thought it was enough. But it's just a paper box. I don't know if it, there's nothing in it. I painted the inside too. Just to sort of color coordinate with the little T. That one sits on the drawer. I mean on the um, shelf also. And 
Let's see. What else do I do? I don't know. It says, what's my favorite movie? I don't know that I have a favorite movie. I mean, okay, so there's those movies that you watch every time it's on, whether you saw it a million times, doesn't matter what part of the movie. Wizard of Oz is one of those. A Christmas Story is one of those. Um... I thought of a couple other before this, but of course you can never remember when you need to. I'm more into, I, I love sci-fi, um, crime, action. So I own the Star Wars series. I own the X-Men series. Uh, Planet of the Apes, I actually, I have at least two of the three of those movies. I'm trying to think, what else? think anything else right now as far as tv sh uh, next one says tv shows seven number seven tv shows tv shows i usually watch well, i watch doctor who i do like doctor who and i've been watching netflix a lot so i liked stargate i watched all the stargates all the seasons all the different variations love that i watch blue bloods and I've watched all the CSIs. And... And if you want to go old school, people mention Golden Girls. Hysterical, love that. Back in the day when I was little, it was a Brady Bunch. Although I think if I watched it now, it would highly annoy me. And, uh... I can't think of anything else. Favorite book. My favorite book is The Stand. By Stephen King. Stephen King's my favorite author. Uh, I've read The Stand twice. It's the only book I've read twice. Back in high school was Daniel Steele. I wouldn't read another one of those books if I was paid. I read a lot of Stephen King. Not every one of them. And believe it or not, I know a lot of people like Cujo. Couldn't read it. Can't, I mean, he's my favorite, but it doesn't mean I have to like everything, right? And I just couldn't get into it. But The Stand is definitely my favorite book, and I really like 12 Past Midnight, which was four not-so-short stories. What's my favorite music? I like everything. I even like a little bit of country. I like show tunes because I grew up in theater, and I had done some behind-the-scenes dressing and stuff in theater also. But mostly, I listen to rock, like Disturbed and... Let me think. I was just listening to Five Finger Death Punch today. But I like pop. I mean, I like Christina Aguilera and all that stuff from back. I'm, I'm a product of the 80s and 90s. So I'll listen. My play, I, I think I went through some songs on my phone today when I was listening. I had listened to White Snake and Disturbed and Five Finger Death Punch and uh, Matchbox 20. Rob Thomas, I was listening to him. And Christina Aguilera came on, and then back over to, I think, Buck Cherry came on, and Hinder. So I'll listen to a lot of stuff. Mostly it's rock. It's my go-to. And what's the one best word that describes me? Funny? I usually can make somebody laugh. It's, a, it's an art form. I don't know. I might not come up that funny here, but I can be pretty funny. Yeah, some of my friends. Um, I was just talking to Jennifer, Dark Side Stitcher, tonight. We were cracking up. Uh, I do want to give some shout-outs before I get to the rest of my, my FFOs. Yvonne, the Night Owl Stitcher. I think we met. I th If you were at the Georgia retreat for the Primitive Stitcher Society, we probably met. Love you. You had me cracking up when you said you were sick. I'm sorry you were sick. I really am. That's not funny. When you said you tried not to cough up a toenail, I sat here and I almost spit coffee. That was funny. Love watching you. And watching you, I just felt, the, within the first couple of videos, I was like, I just want to go have coffee and cobbler with her. You just seemed like the person that I'd come over and you'd have the coffee and the cobbler and we'd sit there and we could stitch and laugh and have a good time. Love watching your stuff. Uh, new one for me is stitch all the things. Hi, Christina. We were just messaging back and forth about a couple things and we have a couple friends in common on on the interwebs 
and love her. I am so envious of her fabric. I told her I want to come over and grab it all. It's great. I love her work. I think she's done a great job. I love her. I want to try those project bags. I, I think it's Mama Joan, Mama June, Mama Joan that has the tutorial. I do want to try to make some of my own. I have a couple of fabrics here. I want to make some more project bags because I want it to be a little bit more uniform. I have like different kinds of bags and it'd be nice to have some really thin ones. Uh, another shout out, Lisa Stitch and Stable. Lisa and I have known each other. Oh goodness, Lisa, has it been 15 years? How old were the kids when they were running around? We were yelling at them. We met way back in the Yahoo group days when we used to sit there and have our what we called Stitch and Bitch. And we'd have our little headsets on, little headphones and the boom mic. And there'd be like 10 of us in there and we'd all be talking and stitching and kids running around or sometimes we got them to bed and just uh, we've all gone through a lot of stuff and Lisa and I actually went through a lot of similar stuff almost around the same time and we've always just kept in in contact with each other we talked on the phone we talk on video but we haven't met in person maybe we should start a GoFundMe so we can get plane tickets to meet each other <laughs> I'm kidding but Lisa, she, she does have a YouTube on here. As a matter of fact, watching hers, I was like, if Lisa can do it, I can do it. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so, and then there was another one. Drew from Weasley Studios. I just started watching you too because I'm still getting into all the floss tube videos. Your tattoo designs, the, the I forget exactly, the Inspirations or something like that. When I first saw it, and, you know, I saw it here and there. I think I saw it on yours and on somebody else's or on Stitch Mania or something. And when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's cute, but it's not something I'd stitch. And then I saw yours and then it came to me. I think I would love to stitch that on an actual flesh-colored linen. I think it would look cool, like almost like it came off somebody's arm. So I'm thinking about it. I might go on my wish list. I think that was a great job. Love the stitching you do. Um... That's it for the shout outs. I'll probably put their links below after everything's over with. And we'll go on to my FFOs. This one. Huh, here we go again. I can't remember and I already got rid of all this stuff. This was a kit. And it might have actually been a Dimensions kit. It came with everything. It came with this, look at that cute little. And Vana, don't yell at me. It's not stuffed to the core. It's actually just very lightly stuffed just to make it... Okay? Don't yell at me. Anyway, this is how it came. It even came with this raffia and everything. I, I don't know what to do with it. I'm going to have to give it to somebody. It's not... I mean, it's cute. It's just not something I would normally have around. And I stitched it up and I still have it here. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll have a giveaway or maybe somebody will... Surprise, it's their birthday. We're not sure. That sits up on my thing right now. This. This one is also not stuffed like it should be. This is way before Vaughn. But it only sits in a, in a basket. I don't use it. This, I don't know his name. It was a freebie on Silk Weaver's. It was on Silk Weaver's site before they went over to Zwagger. Is that where they went to? Anyway. I call him Tomas. Tomas the Toucan. I had messed up so much here that I wasn't going to finish him. And I actually sent him to my friend Holly in Minnesota? Michigan. She's in Michigan. I didn't think about it. I know she was somewhere near Detroit. Anyway, and she finished that off for me, this part here for me, and then sent it back, and I found this really cool fabric. Look at that. It was already pre-sewn together. You bought it by, a yard, by the yard like that, and it's got this little, but who cares. But I just thought that was really great for poor little Tomas. And he's on a silk weaver fabric. I know it is because it was like you got the design and by the fabric, blah, blah, blah. Here is another one. This one I finished in 2001. He sat and sat. This is Norman Rockwell. It's one of the Norman Rockwell designs. And I think it was 
a leaflet, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, he sat. He sat in my finished forever, and it was all because I was looking for the perfect fabric. I didn't want cartoony fish. I didn't want, you know, those big-eyed fish, things that didn't look real. I wanted something more realistic, but small enough so you could see it was fish, because I didn't want to fish this big. And I found this fabric, like, ten years later, I found this fabric. Look at that. And I just thought that was absolutely perfect. And I didn't match up everything. I just sort of slapped it together. And, and I, I just think it's great. I'm all sleeping guy. Oh, and real quick. I had two more finishes. One I forgot to show in my last vin video when I showed it. This was the one I was supposed to show you guys. This one's called Love Farm. And this one is by Prima Vagorn. She's on Etsy. I did this one. This is my new favorite fabric. It's called Shroom Juice. And let me see if I can get a piece of paper back there. Can't really see it on the camera right now. Well, a little bit. There's like a little to undertones of green in there. And there's even a little bit of peach or reddish in there, but not too bad. You can barely see it unless you really look. Love this. I think this is great for just about anything you could almost fit it into anything halloween you could fit it into i mean this is obviously more like a february valentine's type thing and it worked in there um i think maybe some of the little house needleworks would really work this is 32 count shroom juice it's by dames of the needle and i i'll have her etsy down there i told her it's my new favorite one so she better have a lot in stock this one this is American Eagle 1776. And I think it was done on 32 count Dirty U, which is also by Davis the Needle. And I used, you see that okay? I used the threads by Victorian Motto Sampler. Is that which Victorian Sample, Sampler Motto? I, she sells off of eBay and she also sells off of her blog spot and I could put her link down below too but I did that one this one's gonna get framed and put on what I call my hero wall I have a whole wall that's got my grandfather up there in his big old patch from when he retired and it's got my boyfriend from when he retired when he passed uh, certification to become law enforcement it's got my nephew up there from when he was in the Navy it's got pictures from my grandfather in the war. He was in two wars, Korean War, World War II. And behind us, see right there? That's the back. It's a shadow box. I have to redo it. He did that. He reused. He repurposed. I learned how to do it from him. But that's all his medals. His medals are all in there. It fell over. Some of the medals came loose. I have to fix it. I want to put it proper. I need to get a whole new piece and so I can hang it back up on the hero wall. But he's a silver silver star and i have the certificate and a bronze star and i have the certificate and a purple heart so he he's a pretty cool guy this one i didn't actually stitch this is blackbird designs a friend of mine stitched it and it came with us she got the box and she did the stitching it's got another piece i'll show you inside and she gave me the box and the stitching and she said here you know how to finish things, finish things. So I painted it and I sanded it down and I added the chenille, which I do believe is Dames of the Needle again. And, aha, uh -huh. here goes one of those. This one's, <laughs> this lobster claw isn't as bad because it's really thin scissors, but it's one of the lobster claws I used. Okay, now there's the other stitch part. And I put this across to hold the scissors, and I use this fabric for scissors. The only thing I didn't like was I should have put this up here. And so I could have these two, you know, one fabric here, one fabric there. So it didn't look like half and half. And this is a needle minder that I made. I just put it on there because I thought that was cute. And then the little thread holders that I just tied in there for now. But that's the finished piece. And I haven't quite used it. Why do you make 
really cool things like this and it's so pretty you don't want to use it because you don't want it to get ruined but it sits up here and I get to look at it all the time put that up there all right let's get moving this piece I found who was buying now I forget again and I thought I wrote it down and I, I wanted to try some specialty stitches so I stitched this up and it was supposed to have a crystal dove on it, but I didn't have the crystal dove, and I like this better. It's a dragonfly, and I found this basket that I had sitting around, so I painted it. I painted the green, and then the mauve on there. It opens up. See? There's nothing in it, but I just mounted it on there, and it sits up on the shelf. Why can't I remember again where I This might have been... No, I'm thinking, it, I was going to say maybe Victoria, Sa Victoria Sampler. But I don't think it is. If I remember, I'll, I'll add it to the bottom. Alright. In my last one, I told you about Hobnob. And how much I liked... Uh, the button and everything. And I finished that one and I had another. Here's the other one that I found a frame for. Let it snow. I'm not sure if it was called Let It Snow or if it was called Winter, but I just thought it was cute. And this hangs by a ribbon. I bought this like this, exactly like this, and I threw it in there. And that hangs up all year round because I don't change out my stitching. I don't change out my wall decor. This was a dollar store frame that I, I painted, and I used crackle on it. <coughs> and... This was a, I don't know the exact name of it, but it was some kind of American needle roll. And I got that at Silk Weaver. That was back when Silk Weaver was selling those. And it came with the button and everything. And I have a summer picnic one that I might do a giveaway for. I'm debating. It was a free chart, but you bought the fabric. And I think the threads and the button with it. Uh, anyway, it's supposed to be a needle roll. I don't really need needle rolls. I don't have that much space to sit them all around. I've been doing pin, little pin tucks and stuff like that. So I would, I would have to frame it to put it up. And I'm just not into the summer one anymore. But this one's on my hero wall. I need to get a better mat for that. But that'll do for now. It, it looks okay. This one I did back in 2005. Welcome to the Nut House. I do believe this is Waxing Moon. And I'm pretty sure I used the called four colors for it. And I, I can't even remember. I know I framed this way back then, too. It's been hanging up forever. Should have seen the dust I got off of it. Everybody shows their special cup. It's cute. It's an elephant. I don't know that it's my special cup, but it works because it has a lid. And I'm in Florida, so if I take coffee outside... I want to live. There's way too many bugs. I don't need the extra protein. But my neighbor got this for me. I take care of her dog when she goes away. His name's Forbes. He's a, some kind of hound. He, I think he's like, what are those hush puppies called? He's one of those. His, his legs, I don't know. He, he's a big dog, but his legs are like this long. It's cute. Anyway, love him. And they have a cat that has no claws or no teeth. So when he hisses, I just shake my head and laugh at him. But when they're gone, I go feed them. So for Christmas, she felt she needed to give me something. She knows I love coffee. And she got me this cool cup. It's ceramic with a little plastic top that snaps on. All right. This one, I think I need to reframe. I'll put it in the same frame. I wanted, I painted it black. And if you look, I can't even get it to show up in this light. Unless it's like really bright light. You still can't see it. The inner line, and I got sick of playing with it, but if you, in person, it's purple. It's a dark purple. I just think I probably should have lightened the purple just a little bit more so you could see it. But this one's Hocus Pocus. I do believe that's Waxing Moon also. Love this one. Love how dainty the spider webs are, even though I really do hate spiders, by the way. But I think that's great. I didn't want to add any buttons or anything. I think there's enough elements in here that you really don't need anything extra. And I didn't put glass on it, I think. It's just, this is a frame I repurposed from 
the thrift store. Let's see, I did the lacing on the back. But that's Hocus Pocus. Like I said, I might redo it. I have some t uh, stitchery tape coming to me, so I might do the stitchery tape to sort of tighten that up just a little bit more. It's gonna be, that's really pretty. I'm not gonna be happy about having to take that apart, but I don't want it to be baggy on the front either. Uh, I stitched this and framed it in the same year. This is 2013. This is definitely Lizzie Kate. And I think he's called 2010 Snowman. So if you like him, you know, she's going out of business. You better run and get one. He's really cute. It was a quick workup. Just a couple of buttons that came with it. And a couple of... One, two, three. Three beads, two buttons. And this, again, is a frame that I got from the thrift store. It had a cute little picture in it. This is cuter, though. So... I think I might have got this frame for a dollar. Um, <laughs> okay. I know Night Owl. No, not Night Owl. Sorry. Uh, Dark Side Stitcher is watching. And she needs to make her boyfriend come see this. I s frame this on my own. This one's called Windy Day. There's another one of those funny ones, remember when I said about the wind on the flames and the far, it, with the snowman. This one is by Vivian Bales, and I stitched this up, and I think I mentioned this one in my last video. He's called Windy Day, and he's had a really windy day so much that his head has fallen off. Well, that wasn't good enough for me. She had a stitched hat up here instead I made out of polymer clay. I made this hat. And then, how do you have him and not have a nose anywhere? She had no nose charted on it. So I made a clay, and it's like 3D even. I made a, a clay button of a carrot nose, because his nose should be over here anyway. And, boy, I'm pretty sure that all of us had had some kind of windy day every once in a while. Sue Hill... Ugh. I have to clean that with get some Windex. Sue Hillis. This is, uh, it's not called Black Hat Society. I forget exactly what it's called. Now, I'm pretty sure somebody will correct me. And, but I know it's not called Black Hat Society. I forget what else it's called. But, um, this one called for, I think there's another one that called for candy corns. And instead, I just put her, and I did put the glass on here. I just put that little charm of a witch there. And I know that this fabric is one of the opalescents from Silk Weaver. I don't know which color it is, but it, it's it, but it's old. I don't even think I have it. I have a year. 2009. So. This one. I just saw this pattern online not too long ago. That reminded me of who it was from. And I want to say. I want to say it's Shepherd's Bush. And I'm pretty sure it was a free one. This is. I framed this one. This fabric was a linen that I. Had in my stash. And years ago people were trying Kool-Aid dyeing. So so did I. And that's what this is. This is Kool-Aid. I hand dyed it myself and then I had to stitch something and I thought that was great on there when I went to go I think I framed this back in 2013 I was like oh let me find a frame for it found this picket fence how perfect is that that hangs up pretty sure that's shepherd's bush this one homespun elegance it's called broom riders do you see the size of this frame I like it. I love the pattern. And as soon as I saw it, I ordered it right away. And I should have known what size it was going to be, but I didn't pay attention. And I got it in the mail, and I think I want to say I paid about $32 for the chart and this frame. And I was disappointed. 
The only saving grace is I don't know where I'd find a frame exactly this size unless I really looked. I, I probably can buy one at Michael's. There's nothing on the back to hold anything in. I had to use straight pins that I sort of hammered in. Um, the paint job, it look, it's painted and it looks like bingo daubs on there and I, I could have painted it myself. I, I don't know. I, like I said, I really like it, but I don't think it's $32 like it. Am I wrong? Let me know. All right, like I said, I'm a big Eagles fan. Eagles changed their colors. I stitched up this eagle and changed his colors. It's it's an old chart. It's called NFL mascots or something like that. And I think it's out of print. And I changed him to be the new eagle's green colors. And I put it, that you can't see it, but this is speckled almost in eagle's green dots also. Love this little guy. This one, I need to see if maybe, I thought I put it on sticky board. Maybe not. Maybe if I could, I can't get the wrinkle out of here. Maybe I need that best press from uh, what Vanna was talking about because I cannot get the crease out of this. This is a Leisure Arts. It was a Peanuts Christmas one that I had years ago. <clears throat> I was going through charts and I was thinking, uh, what should I st start next? And this is back when I was using Ada. And I asked my son who's 22 now, he, I was like, which one should I do? And he looked through and he said, do this one. So this is the one I did for him. And this is a dollar store frame. And for now it sits in there cause I just, it, it fits in there. But I think I do want to take it out and maybe put it on the sticky board. Maybe it'll lay better. Maybe, maybe I'll best press it cause it's only laced in the back. And then I'll paint this at the same time, make it festive, maybe red and green or Blue. I could use the blues and purples. I don't know. I'll do something cute. But it's cute for now. I, I'm saving my favorite for last. But this one. This is the only time I paid for Well, second time I paid for framing. This one was from M Designs. And it's called Halloween. It's the Halloween tree from M Designs. I think the fabric... Because it's been a while. I'm pretty sure the fabric was from Silk Weaver. Because I don't think I bought modeled fabric from anybody else when I started this. So, here's the story on this one. Love this design. Let me stitch it up. Uh, what would be a great color for Halloween? Candy corn. So, I chose candy corn from Six Strand, st uh, six strand Sweets. And I'm stitching along, having a great old time. And I ran out. And six strand sweets went out of business. So here I'm sitting here, and I think I've only I only had like I don't know, not even a quarter of the tree left to do. And I didn't know what I was gonna do. I mean, what do you do? That the color wasn't you couldn't find it anywhere. And I put a shout out on Facebook of my friend Mary in I don't know if she's in Chicago proper, but she's up in Illinois, pretty close to Chicago. She had it, and she sent it to me. She was a lifesaver. I was so, 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 so happy. So I got to finish it, and I used a Mod Podge of different buttons. These two buttons here are, it's hard to see, but they're jack o -lanterns. I actually made those myself. This cat button is from Just Another Button Company. These candy corns I made out of polymer clay. Um... This little star is from Just Another Bun Company. And this, this, I think, uh, I don't know where, I think I got the black ones from, they're little plastic from like Michael's or Joanne's or something. And then I had a little Halloween pack and that's where this, this, and this came from. They're plastic buttons or embellishments anyway. Put those on. And then I made another witch hat because the tree needed something at the top. So that one's Halloween. I did finish the Christmas tree one. I just obviously I didn't didn't put the buttons on. I decided what I want. All right, and there's two more. This one. Oh, and the framing for that. 
even at 65% off with a plain cheapo frame that I did, and I didn't even do museum glass on it, it was still $97. Uh, is, is that, I, I thought that was a lot of money, and that's why I frame a lot of mine my own, on my own. This one didn't cost that much, and it even had a mat, but I had, she's closed now, she was up in Orlando, but... I had this one done and another one done at the same time. I did this Air Force symbol for a friend of mine. And I had gotten, I did this Navy piece for my boyfriend. This is an out of print chart and I can't remember. It's like Pegasus Designs or something like that had designed it. But instead of using the yellow, I used gold metallics. And you can't really tell from here, I don't think. But it's like a suede mat that she used. It's gorgeous. And it's museum, like it doesn't have, a, I think there's more glare coming from that than this. But there's not as much glare. And that hangs on my hair wall. And my favorite finish so far, this is the one where I'm proud to say that I did it. And I thought of it. And it's like, I don't know, it might be the best, only great idea I've had so far. This one is my coffee tray. I absolutely love coffee. And I know I have a picture on my Facebook for this. This is two Mill Hill kits that I got. There's over a thousand beads on this, by the way, on these two, between the two, there's over a thousand beads. And this and this started to be a mistake. The first coffee cup I did, which was the blue one, because blue's my favorite color. Um started it, got over to the side over here, and realized I had one line of stitch left in the perforated paper and uh i didn't know what i was gonna do i finished it i did the other one i centered that one right and i had no way to frame this one that i could think of right now because i had no edge so i had this tray i looked at the tray i cut both of them down to the same size i painted the tray because it's just a michael's tray and then, oh, I have to sneeze. Hold on. Sorry about that. Okay. So I got the tray and I painted it. And you could still see the grain through. I didn't want the paint real dark. I wanted it to look more stained anyway. So I painted and I wiped it off. And then I placed these where I wanted them and I drew a line. I traced them and took them off. And then I sat there with, I think... I don't even know. It was whole beans at the grocery store. And I sat there with the E3000 glue or 6000 glue and these coffee beans. Thank goodness it was outside. It was a very pleasantly eerie smell because you get the coffee beans and then you get the glue and then you get the coffee beans and then the glue. So by the, I don't know how many beans were on here, there's probably a couple hundred. I individually glued each bean around the area that this was going to go into. And I was probably pretty high by the end. But it turned out okay. After I put the beans on, I sprayed. I did a spray sealant. I didn't want any bugs to eat them. I don't know if bugs do eat coffee beans after a while or whatever. But I thought it would be better if I put a gloss finish on it and just to seal them up. So I sealed it up a couple of times and then I glued these in there and I put a hang tag on the back and it hangs in the kitchen with the rest of my coffee decor. So, girls, you coffee addicts, you're not getting it. Somebody asked me after I posted my finish of this, oh, I want one of those, you should make me one. How much? I told them they couldn't afford it. I mean, come on, guys. How much would you charge to do all this cross-stitch, which isn't tons, and then do over a thousand beads, and then glue all these beans on there? Come on. No, they can't afford it. In my time, no. No, 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 no. But that's it. That's a Mill Hill, two Mill Hill kits. I'm not sure if you can still get them. I have no clue. But I just love them to death. Oh, I do have a couple more things. I didn't leave the best for last. This is a freebie. Don't even look. This is a freebie from Not Forgotten Farms. 
and the trim is hand dyed pom pom from Dames of the Needle. Michelle, bendy stitchy. This is a pair of pants. Somebody bought these with hard, hard earned money. Wore these one time. I found it at the thrift store, cut them up, and put it on the back. I love this piece, and I thought it was cute, and it was a cute fit. Really quick to stitch, and I measured real good, and I cut it all out, and I placed it on there, and it looked great. So when I finally glued it on, it was crooked. The whole piece is crooked to the cardboard, and I'm not taking it apart. I mean, it's a primitive piece. Um, being askew is primitive, isn't it? I don't know. It's cute. Cute enough that I'm going to leave it. Oh, and this is a uh, silk ribbon hand dyed from Not Forgotten Farms, too. Last video, I showed you this with the pants. Remember? Pants. And I finally <coughs> excuse me, stuffed it real good. And I glued that little rusty bat on there. I was going to glue a witch too, but I thought less was more. I think she looks cute. She's nice and stuffed. I have a basket down here. I did the months. I mentioned that I did the months for primitive acorns. I took the ornamental pins out for now, but these are the, the ones that I did. This is May. This is July. There's the back for May the back for July and here's June it's June and those are the months I did I don't even want to show you this because it's not stuffed enough I might have to take it apart and stuff it again stuff it harder I think I will anyway this is called V is for Vixen And I can't remember the woman's name. I have it somewhere and I'll look it up and I'll put the link down there. And I'm not sure if she's on Etsy or not, but I know we had to email her. It was on Prim St Stitcher Society. They loved it and wanted her to make it again because it was out of print. So she released it again as a PDF file. Now, I'm not big into um, religion or anything like that. And it says V is for Vixen. That was that I saw down by Crow Creek. I guess I should show you. <clears throat> and then, that, and then it said W is for Winter and something about God in there. I think I, I don't remember. I didn't do the bottom. So what I did was I took this and I moved this bird up because this bird was down here. And I just did that part. I thought that was cute because V is for also for Vicky, who can be a Vixen. And then there was supposed to be stitched stars here, and I put these little brass ones that I had. I just thought that was cute. And I am going to stuff this again. <sighs> Vana's guilting me, and, and she doesn't even know it. And then I took a rusty safety pin and one of my beads that I had. And these little bells, if you could hear them. And then I hand-stitched this piece of wool on. And it actually, here, I'll show you. If I wanted to use it proper... It fits a pair of scissors in there. But I will have to restuff that now. I'm going to put this over there to do that. This is this is not stuffed extra good, but I didn't want it that way on my tree. And it's pathetic. That's pathetic. I did that too. Anyway, this is cute. This is one over one. And this was in a magazine. This is one of those from Just Cross Stitch Magazine. I don't remember which year. And I'm trying to remember who stitched it. I mean, uh, who designed it. Do you know? Do you know who designed that? I mean, it's been a while. 2009. My memory's gone. Let me know. I saw recently where somebody posted, I think it was on one of my other groups, she posted, Candy Cane Stitchers group, that she finished hers, and I was like, oh, I did that one. Yeah, I did this one. This is by Homespun Elegance, 
it's one of those annual Santa Claus kits that my friend Diane sent me. She sent me three of them. This is the second one. I showed you the other one. And I finished him and I put that on there. And then this is the third one that she sent me. And I had to mend him because I use this fabric and it's really cool. And it's a little bit redder than I wanted, but you're not really gonna see the front and the back at the same time, but it likes to fray. And I had to put some fray check on him. <clears throat> anyway, but he's cute too. And those didn't make it to the Christmas tree this year because they were tucked away somewhere where they probably shouldn't have been. That's why I didn't find them. And then there's Sleep Tight. Sleep Tight is also not stuffed real good. I'm feeling so inept right now. I don't know. Sleep Tight. <clears throat> I do believe Sleep Tight is by Bent Creek. And that was a really quick stitch. And I found this really cool fabric. I thought that was cool. All the, all the colors matched on it. And I made that into a pillow. It just sits in a basket in the hallway. So. That is it. That's all my stuff. And I do believe this is close to an hour now anyway. So. Thanks for listening to me ramble. Uh. Don't forget to subscribe, please, and like and or comment or whatever. You know, if you have any suggestions or any questions, let me know. I'll try to remember all the links. What I end up doing is I'll get it uploaded, and then I'll put the links I remember right away, and then I'll sit there, and I'll second-guess myself, and I'll start watching, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, I got to put that one on there. Oh, yeah, I got to put that one on there. Any, <clears throat> any and all suggestions and questions and comments are welcome if there's somebody you need you think i shouldn't watch i don't know if i mentioned all of them yet but let me know and hope to see you again soon thank you